space, the boundary of human achievement, the new frontier. Mm. <laughs> it's just a cop. Yeah, right. And the earth is flat. Treat your cough seriously with Robitussin CF Max. Nothing lasts longer and treats more symptoms for your cough, cold, and flu. Robitussin, because it's never just a cough. In a few moments, you will have an experience which will seem completely real. It will be the result of your subconscious fears transformed to your conscious awareness. Warning, this tape must not be played by government personnel. It can be extremely harmful and result in severe trauma. You have five seconds to terminate this tape. Five, four, three, two, one. still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. Lexi, tell us something interesting. Okay. The earth is flat and a witch stole his pants. Flat Earth expert Mark Sargent thinks the moon landing was a hoax. Technically, the moon itself is a hoax. Right, but betting with Sportsbet's new iPhone app? I could do this standing on my head. Thanks, Gravity. Sportsbet's new iPhone app. It's foolproof. I know how we're different. Do you believe the Earth is flat? I know it's flat. I walk on it. Holy sh**. Do you think the flat no, the Earth is flat? It's a flat world after all. <laughs> Smoke weed every day. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship currently at war with mainstream science. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is concerned that one of the American MQ-9 drones was hit by a Russian Su-27 fighter. Why is he concerned? Facts. That's why. A drone cruising speed is approximately 200 miles an hour, while in contrast, the cruising speed of that Su-27 is 837 miles per hour. So these two planes bumped into each other and damaged the drone's propeller, which is on the back of the drone... Uh, the magic bullet theory of JFK is more believable. More on that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I am your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman, Clo and Stro <laughs> Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. 
Just Google Flat Earth Clues if you can't find it while well, you're just not very good at the internet. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And yes, Carolina, if it is not, look at date. March 14th in the year 2023, the future. Then you are listening to a rerun. Quote of the day goes exactly like this, which I wrote. If you would have, this goes along with the whole never say never, right? If you would have told me eight years ago that I would be doing Flat Earth podcasts for eight years, I would have said never. If you would have told me that Justin Bieber was going to develop side effects from something that we don't know anything about and essentially quit the business, I would have said never. Coincidentally, by the way, after I made the title, I did not know this, Justin had a song, a hit called Never Say Never. Providence. Yeah. Mm. And if you would have told me in 1981 that it would have taken me 42 years to figure out the name of a song I heard exactly one time in my life, you get the idea. Never say never. It could happen to you. I'm not going to play the video because we have too many headlines to, to cover, but the video is on my channel. It's called Never Say Never, the Search for the Meteor Man song. And is a quick little snippet of, of part of my childhood. You can see me, a picture of me at 13 years old. Super fun. And uh, the, the hell, if you guys have ever had a song stuck in your head, you will appreciate it. And the ending is worth it. And that's for you, Stephen Carpenter, who I will mention real fast uh, when we get to shout outs. Stephen Carpenter, musical stuff. You will totally get to the end of that video if you watch it. Hey, Karen. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, my co-host. She's lovely. She's sassy. She's one of the biggest flat earth <laughs> rock stars ever. I was looking down. I should have been looking up. Karen B from the channel of the same name, Karen B. What's going on? Um, I was just about to tell you your camera's out of focus, but it went back in focus oh, randomly. That's because the camera hates me. I, I dated a girl once, by the way. Her voice had a vaguely electronic quality to it. <laughs> You're thinking, oh, she was probably a robot, right? No, but when she would call into voice messaging systems, her voice would trigger some of the options. <laughs> You know, like when you have to say like press two or press three, something and it would drive drove her insane. And and I she would do this. She goes, watch this, put it on speakerphone. And she'll be like, she's like, Yeah, this is Christia, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, I'm sorry. Do you want to re-record that message? She's like, no, I don't. <laughs> they would hang up on her all the time. Weird. Super, super weird. Hey, Karen, being the current queen of Flat Earth, it must be hard to find Flat Earth friends. Do you know an easy way to find cool people like yourself? And Solid info about our stationary horizontal level plane. Why, yes, that would be the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Yeah, it's the perfect gift for friends, family, <laughs> and complete strangers. Watch the feature video every day for two weeks and see what happens. It'll be the best two ninety nine dollars you've ever spent. I'm and Dave Weiss, and I'm still in Mexico, and I still endorse this channel. And you can bypass Google censorship. There you go. Don't forget, you can also find this program on BitChute and Brideon, Rockfin and Rumble and other platforms that haven't even been invented yet, but will in the future. YouTube is not the end of Flat Earth. It is just the beginning. Shout outs to Flat Earther Stefan Carpenter of the Deftones. Support the Flat Earth cause and get the coolest hoodies ever. Go to the strong.family, won't you? Pick up some merch. And Stefan, if you're watching, seriously, watch, watch my Never Say Never standalone video. Seriously, watch it. It's only like 11 minutes. You can like listen to it in the background. All the slides are pretty funny. Uh, meetups. There is, let's do the, the meetup that's happening uh, through the email first. Uh, hi, Mark and Karen. Hope you're doing well. Uh, the Oklahomies, sounds like a gang. Hummingbird Hangout, that does not sound like a gang. Occurring on Saturday, April 22nd from noon to whenever. The Hummingbird Beach located in Lake Eufaula. That's E-U-F-A-U-L-A, -A State Park near Chicota. Hopefully Oklahoma entrance is right off SR 170, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you want to go to this, oh, by the way, peanut gallery, is he going to nod? He, yes. Peanut gallery will be attending this event. Yes. You can meet the peanut gallery. Yes. Peanut gallery will be there. Uh, RSVP by calling Jesse at 857-344-6209 or truth or Chloe at five four zero five six one four two two five zero or email either of them at 300 k mile prius at gmail.com or chloe rebecca at gmail.com that's c-h-l-o-e-r-e-b-e-k-a-h at gmail.com 
All that information is at flatearthfestivals.com under Flat Earth Friendly Meetups, too. Yes. And I am going to be at a meetup this Saturday. I'm going to pull it up right now. The meetup, Flat Earth Meetup, March 18th with me, Southern California, if you are going to be there. And the information... I make sure I get the phone number right. If you want to, uh, if you want to be there, please RSVP 818-442-8974. That's 818-442-8974. I will be flying in Friday evening this week. Oh, we should probably talk about your meetup that just happened. Right? You had a meetup. Yeah, it's our, it happened last Sunday. It was great, by the way. Was it, was it, great? Fun. Was it great? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, Anyway, I will be in Southern California, so if you want to hang out, uh, please RSVP. Uh, you know the numbers; we're, we don't want them to get out of control. So uh, please uh, come if you want. It should be fun. I'm not leaving till uh, Sunday morning, so I will be spending the night there at the event. Awesome! Yeah, yeah. So where where'd you do your thing? We did it at this little um, area called Drayton Mills, and it's like this little park that's got. It's it's cool. It's got like a fountain and some ducks and a koi pond and little restaurants and breweries and stuff. It's like a little I don't know how to describe it, but it was fun. And we had a um, a lot of people there and it was child friendly. So if we ever do meetups there again and you didn't make it to this one, come to the next one. We had all we were all just hanging out and all the children were playing together. It was a good time. Cool. Yeah, well, that's wonderful uh yeah other than that those are the two meetups that are going to be happening soon and and of course by the way you know this is episode 398 so next week will be 399 and then of course the big 400 which will be yes what day is that is that march or is that april i uh, think yeah. it's the last show in march isn't it yeah yeah 20 yeah next week is 21st and then the 28th so the last show in march will be episode 400 don't really know what we're gonna do with that one yet um, yeah. might bring on a couple other people just to hang out. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Um, was there anything else before we got to the headlines? I don't think there was. You think of anything? Did you have any other meetups on your board? Um, there are some other meetups. There's one in Melbourne, Florida. That's going to be Saturday, April 1st at, Sh at Shelly's house. And all the information to RSVP and get details is on the website at flatearthfestivals.com. There's also going to be another hike in Tucson. So there's a meetup in Arizona. And also there will be Jam in the Plain, which is June 16th through the 18th on private property in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And you can get a hold of Josh Fathead Perkins if you want to attend that. And all the details on the website, flatearthfestivals.com, and just click where it says Flat Earth Friendly Meetups. There you Groovy. go. Groovy. And an email came in uh, before the show. This is kind of for you, which is weird. Um, hey, Mark, one more thing. Until about a few weeks ago, I had no idea it was Karen B., our queen, on that famous poster with her pointing the gun towards the camera and saying, say gravity one more time. <laughs> they did not know it was you. Tell her I said thank you for the inspiration. <laughs> Attached is my Telegram profile page. So I will send that to you. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. You got fans out there i'm more of a curiosity i'm more of a circus side show <laughs> people it's like look what's over here that guy was there that's weird plus he's got a giant head okay let's go to the headlines see what i did there headlines first one this is from uh peanuts quote of the day russian this fox news russian jet collides with us this just happened with us drone in international airspace over the black sea officials say okay well we won't cover this one too long because this story is got all I'm, I'm sure is not even remotely accurate first up but this part could be accurate first off what is one of our drones doing over the black sea where russian fighters are normally flying don't know but they were over there and supposedly one of their fighters just decided to shoot it down or do something to it they said oh no we had a propeller that went down and, and it crashed into the sea so they could make up any story they wanted it looks bad, though, if it says, oh, yeah, SU-77 shot it down. We could have shot it down. But it's a it's a ninja drone on our part. Why would you even why would you even confess that it was ours? Guys, what? Eh. Trying to start a fight. It's not working. Russians don't care. It's like we shoot down drone. 
don't care. Uh, SU, what'd I say? SU 27? What'd I say? SU 77? No, you, I think, I don't know. I Whatever. Seven. Whatever. He can't hear me because he's got smoke in his ears. All right. Next one down is from the AP News Wire. Taiwan suspects Chinese ships cut the island's internet cables. What? How how is how is this a mystery at all? What do you mean you suspect they cut the island's internet cables? Who else would it be? Wouldn't be us. Anyway, so yeah, I love the picture, love the, the the image they use there of an anti aircraft gun. <laughs> yeah, pointing to just ten kilometers away from mainland China at its closest. Uh, whatever. And even the opening headline or the, the opening paragraph in the past month, bed and breakfast owner Chen Yu Lin had to tell his guests he couldn't provide them with the Internet. Yeah, sounds like a major security threat to me. Moving on. Next one down. This is from the BBC. <laughs> Staying in the Chinese thing. Uh, why do Chinese billionaires keep vanishing? <laughs> I didn't realize that was an issue. Well, apparently, I'm going to read a couple paragraphs from this one. The disappearance last month of technology industry dealmaker deal Bao Fan has rekindled interest in recent Chinese phenomenon, vanishing billionaires. The founder of China Renaissance Holdings, with a client list that has included internet giants Tencent, Alibaba, and Baidu, is seen as a titan in the, uh, in the sector. But the point is, all these guys, they have a common thread, and that is they have criticized the uh, the Chinese government in a non, not so flattering way. And then they just kind of vanish. See, over here, if you're a billionaire and, you know, you say anything bad about the government, we'll, you know, we'll put leverage on you. We'll try to make an example out of you. But you're not going to disappear. Over there, apparently, they just disappear. So, um, yeah. And the government and, and the government says, oh, yeah, we're not even going to look for them. Really? Why is that? So that's kind of interesting. Hmm. Some things are different. Next one down. Let's jump over to space. That's from space.com. So you absolutely positively know it's real. The International Space Station fires thrusters to avoid collision with satellite. The ISS plane dodgeball with debris and other satellites in low Earth orbit is becoming more common. Yeah, this is one of those space propaganda stories. Make mm -hmm. you believe in space multiple ways. One, that there's an ISS. Two, that there's a sad there's satellites. And three, that they're so close that they're dodging each other ever, even though I have never seen a story like this run about the ISS ever. Because if you're dodging a satellite one day, why aren't you dodging them all the time? All the time. Nope. Nope. Not buying it. It's it's a wonderful little nothing story, though, that they put out there. They go into detail about what satellite it was and what thrusters they fired. Uh huh. Yep. Whatever. Hmm. Yep. Next one down. My favorite guy, sports favorite flat Earth guy, Novak Djokovic. Uh, you know he is not as you, as you probably heard a couple of weeks ago. He is not coming to the U.S. because the U.S. for whatever reason, even though the government says the pandemic is pretty much over, government is not letting in foreign nationals without a shot. So I can go to freaking Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. come back, no problem. But Novak flying in from Europe for a tennis tournament where no one's going to be wearing a mask and nobody's going to have a shot in their arm. Nope. Nope. Even though he's the number one tennis player in the world. Why is this notable? Because the governor of Florida said, uh, Karen was right, this only happens at the airports, right? So the governor said, no, no, we'll, we'll have him fly into the Bahamas and we'll get a freaking cigarette boat. And we'll just haul ass and, and come over come over here. It'd be kind of a bumpy ride, to be perfectly honest, coming from the Bahamas via boat. But that's not going to happen. The tournament is uh, next week. Nope, nope. He's not going to make it. And if he does, hey, great, but I don't think he's going to make it. Next one, next one down. What time do we got? We're good. We're good. Um, next one down is oh yeah, this story. I remember I talked about. It. I don't know why they keep running this from the BBC. Lovely image there. Can artificial can artificial intelligence ever become sentient? Which means for the layman, can a machine ever become self aware? Will my vacuum? No, no, it can't. My vacuum again. My vacuum cleaner over there is never going to roll over here one day and just start talking to me about philosophical issues. It's just never going to happen. 
what and and the reason is is to create sentience to create something self-aware you actually have to look at yourself you literally as a programmer you have to look at yourself as like what makes me human and then you have to figure out a way to program that good luck you're not going to just be able to type in i think therefore i am and then it just happens it's not <laughs> it doesn't happen that way Never, we can't, again, we can't even define it in science fiction, how you can do it. So nobody ever does. They just make up something. Some, some, it's like, oh, yeah, again, I, I poured my Mountain Dew on it while lightning struck it. And the, the ghost of my dead father flew into it simultaneously. Then it became self-aware. It's like, wow, can you repeat that? No. BBC, come on. But the, the general person out there, the, again, they've confused it. We, you remember Karen back in the day. When AI used to mean self-aware a mm -hmm. long time ago, but then they decided, no, no, no. AI means any device that has the ability to do self, you know, to do automated scripts for, for different programming stuff, like, like your smartphone, right? So now AI is an overused and worthless term. So self-aware, look for it. It's never, ever going to happen. Next one down RT.com. We'll jump back to space. NASA warns of a possible Valentine's Day asteroid strike. Karen, Valentine's Day when? Uh, next Wait. year? Oh, 2046? Yeah. <laughs> why? Why are you? Why? RT, I love you, but why are you running this? A 50 meter space rock you think is going to hit in the year 2046 on Valentine's Day. Uh huh. But the chances are very small, said U.S. Space Agency. Again, this is just one of those stories like, oh, here's another rock that's that may hit us 50 meters wide. Even if oh, whatever you're going to you put that out again. People don't even remember what they had for dinner three nights ago. You, you're going to expect them to remember this. No, <laughs> no, it's never ever going to happen. Oh, uh, next one down. Just more propaganda. Yep. We got one more before Lucky Unlucky. <laughs> it's my favorite one. Favorite one before Unlucky. This is from RT.com. You will not see this in American media. Fentanyl is an American problem, says the American, says the Mexican president. <laughs> the Mexican president has told Washington to deal with his own problem of social decay instead of blaming drug labs in his country. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the quote is, is like this, right? Here... In Mexico, we do not produce fentanyl, and we do not have consumption of fentanyl. Advising Americans to take care of their problem of social decay instead of waging literal war on drug cartels. Said the right. <laughs> said, said the politician who's absolutely pay, paid for by the drug cartel. I was going to say, just what we should just let them take over the whole country, like Mexico did, right? Yes. Or did that already happen? It did already happen. <laughs> Drug cartels run Mexico. So I've been, the, I, again, so you, you pedal this guy out there. It's like, we have nothing to do with fentanyl production. This is an American problem. You're the guys that are doing it. Well, it's true. We're the only ones that can afford it, I suppose. You guys aren't doing fentanyl like it's going out of style. But, oh yeah, by the way, I had a card in the mail. Somebody sent me a card from Alaska. And, uh, just to go off off script here for a second. Happy St. Patrick's Day, which isn't coming up for a while. A couple more days. Hi, Mark. I hope you are having a good month. Hi to everyone on Strange World. It's so cold here <laughs> in Alaska. Uh, hurry spring. Lots of love, Christine. Thank you, Christine. Honestly, without, these, without reminder letters like this, I wouldn't even know it was a holiday. St. Patrick's Day, because I'm not Irish. It's true. Ask anyone. Okay. Anyway, yeah, enough about the uh, the the drug cartel front man who happens to be the president of of Mexico. Wow. I'm just looking through this, some of this stuff. It's like, really? You ever done fentanyl, Karen? Uh, no. No. Oh, okay. Thought I'd no. trick you with that one. I hear it's not fun at all. It's just cheap. It's just super cheap and super powerful. I just hear that. It, people overdose from it all the time because it's yeah. so much stronger than heroin. It sounds scary, actually. Yeah, it sounds horrible because, yeah, if you miss, if you take the wrong dose with fentanyl, you're you're screwed. Yeah. So, word of the wise, do not do fentanyl on your own. You're never going to do it. 
just don't do it. Or ever. Ever. Or just, all, just don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but the peanut gallery ch- chimed in and said, he goes, I thought David Weiss was running Mexico now. That's not out of the realm of possibility. He's gonna t- he's gonna turn it over to to somebody before he goes. Okay, before we go to the break, let's do a couple lucky unluckies. First one, this one is uh, after the fact. It was sent to me. Oh crap! Did my page just change? God darn it! Hang on. A uh, popular twenty three year old. Oh, won't let me do my thing without my signature. I'm gonna have to read the headline. Crap. Sorry. Popular 23-year-old gamer girl dies suddenly of unknown causes. And her name was, can you, do you have the ability to read it, Karen? Yeah. Sophia Denverno. Yeah. A well-known gamer on YouTube from Jackson County, Miss, am I, was that Mississippi? Suddenly died. Uh, died I think that's, I think that's Michigan. Michigan. Okay, right. Yeah, Michigan. Died suddenly from an unknown case. Yeah. Using used to make videos based on the star stable theme based on YouTube. She looks like she's 12. I know. I know. It's like, wow. Did I look that young at 23? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, next one down. This is not a lucky or unlucky, but it is health related. And that is if you guys are, uh, you don't have the shot and you're looking to meet other people who also have not gotten the shot and you're not happen to be a blue dot working on David Weiss's app on the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. There is a site called unjected.com. Pretty clever. <laughs> I like the opening. I like I like the shots in here. The, the world's number or the world's first unvaxxed platform for all ages in over 85 different countries. I don't know how popular it is, but the fact that we have one out there, that's saying something. No, it's not. It's not a flash yeah. in the pan. The world's first unvaccinated platform, huh? Yeah, yeah. Right there, you go. Yeah, you wonder if there's going to come a day fairly soon where it'd be like the if if you don't have the shot, you're going to be more sought after. All right, unvax. The bar's been set. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, next one down. We'll do a couple more for the break. This one's from Sputnik News. <laughs> This gets the Captain Obvious Award of the day. New York City teeming with rats, obviously, infected with different COVID strains, also obviously. Study warns, of course it is. And, uh, you know, love the pictures. I think those are some dead rats down below. The, uh, it's like, like, this story is basically for New Yorkers. It's like, wait a minute, rats have, rats have COVID? I just saw a rat the other day. You know, there's, there's rats everywhere. I'm sure you'll see rats all the time. Yeah, I, I grew up in a place. I I never I've never lived in a place with with a whole ton of rats, but uh, I I know they're out there. Oh, the cities are horrible. I remember walking um, down San Francisco, just down the street in San Francisco, and there was a big ass rat walking on the sidewalk next to me. Oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Do you know? Do, uh, <laughs> side note: When I went to the New Zealand conference a few years ago. The New Zealand Flat Earth Conference. They told me one of those interesting facts with there are no snakes on the island of New Zealand. They were all killed off at some point. So there's no indigenous snakes. So you can imagine the problem that then occurred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's tons of rats because there's nothing to freaking eat them. So the, you know, this, so what do you, what would you rather have? Some rats and a whole bunch of snakes or no snakes and a whole bunch of rats? I leave that up to you guys. All right, one more before we go to the break, and that is from TMZ.com, because again, we're at that stage where I have to go to TMZ to find out who is unlucky first. Sure enough, VH1's The X-Life, Denise Russo, or Russo, Russo, Russo? Probably Russo. Russo, dead at 44. She, uh, drug paraphernalia was found at the scene, but you know what? That could be that there was a weed pipe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Found at the scene. Now, had she been, yeah, had she been stuck full of needles, maybe, maybe. But yeah, just because there was a weed pipe sitting up next to her luggage doesn't mean anything. So yeah, 44 years old. And and we're told uh, the cause of death is still pending. San Diego Police Department currently investigating. Mm. 
I'm guessing they're not going to find much. All right. With that, we're going to go to our first break. When we come back, we will finish Lucky Unlucky and do some clown worlds and see what happens from there. Hey, Karen. How about some music? All right. You a blue dot? Those questioning where we live are not just here. They are everywhere. Of course this info is hidden from you, but the app shows you that no matter where you go, you aren't alone. We are everywhere, and we are growing. Find your tribe today. Shout out to uh, Karen B, Mark Sargent, David Weiss. I'll be checking out that video this weekend at the uh, Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app on YouTube. Or... Join me, Karen B. Every moon day in Every the moon day. Moon day. Eastern <laughs> on Rockfin, Twitch, and Facebook for an early like chit chat, open phones, open topics, always chill. I hope to see you there. It's funny because it's punny. <laughs> Welcome back to Strange World Part 2 of 4. It's you, me, and the always lovely Karen B. Yeah, you know what? That was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album. Night and day. Not to be compared to the mythical Meteor Man song by uh, Flash and the Pan, but you'll have to watch that video to find out more. I still like it. Okay, let's get to the lucky unlucky finalists of the week. Where do we leave off? Uh, Denise Russo. Okay, South African. Okay, this next one's from the South African. <laughs> Breaking, it's a terrible picture. 
<laughs> Breaking musician Costa Titch dies after collapsing on stage. Tributes have been pouring in, followed the reported passing of rapper and dancer. That's both of those are loose terms. Costa Titch, who was 27 years old, <laughs> uh, from South Africa. Mm -hmm. So I watched the video on this. I sent it to you, Karen, as well. It was interesting because they 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 filmed this. If you're if you're on stage nowadays, oh, something happens on the what? Yeah, it was during a live performance. Yeah, live performance. He drops, hits the stage, gets back up for like two or three more steps, and then falls into the crowd. And that was it. Mm -hmm. um, the headline, the follow-up to that, and yet another tragedy for the South African music scene. Uh, the musician whose full name is, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, uh, reported, yeah, no, he did collapse. I watched the video on this. Um, and they don't say what I'm looking through here. I don't think they say why he, how he died. It was a pretty short article. He just collapsed. That's all another thing. Why they say what they'll mm -hmm. just say, Oh, they collapsed. It's like, why? Well, because he collapsed. It's like, that's not, that's not an answer. Whatever. Suddenly, unexpectedly collapsed. All right. Next one down. Fox News, XFL athletic trainer and former college football player, dead at 22. Ben Siegfried played college football at Small Pennsylvania College. And I scrolled down and towards the bottom, and it says his cause of death was not released. According to Fox 2 in St. Louis, he died at the hotel. A lot of people, by the way, how, how many have we seen that have died in hotels? Weird. You know, just watching TV, watching Sports Center. Da -da -da, da -da -da, and then 22, dude. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. And he was an athletic trainer on top of it, right? <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, it's not like he was sloughing off. Okay, next one down. This one's kind of scary. <clears throat> Lucky unlucky from the dailymail.com. Veteran British Airways pilot dies after suffering heart attack in hotel shortly before he was due to captain the flight from Cairo to Heathrow. Veteran pilot, uh, and what'd he die of? What'd he die of? Suddenly. Suddenly. <laughs> Is suddenly a noun? Weird. Why, why do we keep using it as a noun? Well, it's because the media has been treated as a noun. Suddenly is a thing. Um, Unnamed pilot. Why, why, why? I don't know. Managed to get from his room to the foyer where colleagues perform CPR was unable to save him. <laughs> and of course, a source told the newspaper, it has rocked British Airways. It doesn't bear imagining if he had suffered a heart attack at 30,000 feet. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, your co-pilot probably may have taken over. In fact, there may have been some turbulence if that would have happened, which we'll get how, to. I didn't say how old he was. Yeah, no, they're not going to. Mm. The, the, again, the, the media has been very good over the last few years of just kind of mixing it up. Suddenly, collapsed, unexpectedly, not listed, whatever it was, or just or just plain just died. That's another thing they'll, they'll say. Next one down from Newsmax.com. We've done a lot of unlucky in the, over the last couple of months. Um, oh, this is not a lucky or unlucky, but it is health related. Study, how, how do you pronounce it? Is it keto? Keto? Keto, yes. Keto, keto diet doubles heart risks. Have you ever done a keto diet, Karen? Um, well, kind of. My diet is kind of like a keto diet, but not really on purpose. But not it's strict. Just, it just works out that way. All that means is that you like you eat the high fat. You don't do like I don't eat sugar. And so if you don't eat sugar, then you can eat the high fat content and it satisfies that. It's like fat's actually good for you. It's very sustaining. I, I actually like it. I eat the full fat. I love the fat on the meat. Give me the fat. Groovy. <laughs> Aaron likes fat. Mm -hmm. Got it. Once uh, I started eating that way, though, like not cutting out the fat, eating the fat, yeah, that's when I started to be able to like maintain a lower body weight with much less effort consistently. Nice. That's part of the the, the diet psyop, man. <laughs> eat the fat. 
It's good for you. What are you saying? You're not a big fan of the food pyramid, Garen? <laughs> <laughs> With the all-seeing eye on top? The all-seeing eye, of course, being made out of ice cream. Mm. <laughs> All right, next one down. Uh, we got a couple. Only two, two more unlucky unluckies. Uh, next, one, okay, this one. I love this story. I love this story. This is from the Daily Star. Only England can bring you this sort of stuff. Bride who died of a heart attack during the wedding ceremony, replaced by younger sister. Okay, so this was it wasn't here, of course. It was in India, right? Where you know weddings can be pretty damn spectacular, and you don't want to mess up an Indian wedding, right? Indian weddings are going to go forward. But in this case, so during the elaborate wedding ceremony, would-be bride Hatal suddenly collapsed. Where have I heard that? Look, look what they did there, Karen. They combined both words, suddenly and collapsed. Right? Hmm. Her relatives rushed her to the hospital where she died of the heart attack, right? Uh, died of a heart attack. Meanwhile... Her family, shocking, it wasn't shocking to me, shockingly substituted her younger sister rather than to call off the wedding. Yep. She was in, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the, the, where she was. Okay. She was in the Nari village in the Indian state of Gujarat. Probably butchering that, but I'm American. What are you going to do? Uh, as the elaborate ceremony began, she complained of feeling dizzy, suddenly fainted, and then rather than scrap the wedding her father a local man suggested of course he's local that uh, vishal marry his other daughter instead brilliant brilliant mm. good stuff again turned a negative into positive right this is just wild that's turning a frown upside down yeah okay last one before clown world and it might as well be a clown world but we're not going to call it that because it's true Right. This this because it's from inverse, you know it's true. From their health section, a new universal COVID vaccine could stop future variants in their tracks. So doctors and pharmaceutical companies are now working on a vaccine that not only does a great job now, because they all do, but work on stuff they haven't even seen yet. How much faith you got in that? Not much. That's brilliant. Yep. So yeah, they're they're trying to work on a a, a super vaccine. Where where have I heard that before? Oh right, horror horror <clears throat> zombie movies. Yeah. Isn't that how isn't that how I am Legend started? With They've a, been like, talking about this for years though. Like I first heard about this back in 2018, which is the hundred year anniversary of you know what. Right. And so Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation had this thing where they were encouraging drug makers to create a uh, a universal flu vaccine so this has been going on for a while yes yeah it, it, yeah it's it's again it's propaganda and the, the lines have been drawn well i can't say they've been completely drawn because as we know there have been some long time holdouts people that have held out for years they'll be like there's i know they're worn down or they they just finally like ah, i'll just take it what's the worst thing that's happened what are you talking about your friends and family and co-workers they've been dropping like flies why would you take it now well you know i want to be part of the group team effort 110 percent. do my part boy terrible terrible idea okay uh now we're here in clown world official clown world sections there are three of them first one is from rt.com it's got a military theme to it which is inflatable arms maker reports soaring demand were you people that haven't followed war over the last 50 60 years or longer uh there is part part there is not only making real things like tanks and jeeps and helicopters and stuff like that but you can make balloon versions of them inflatable ones like inflatable rafts and they look from a distance especially from planes and you know high altitude things Mm -hmm. that uh, uh you know drones and whatever they look like the real thing you set them up in a battlefield and people in other countries will waste ordnance and missiles and stuff blowing them up and like ah crap we just blew up a whole field full of balloons yep because the cost remember war is about money mm -hmm. so you want people to spend the millions and millions of dollars on the rockets to blow apart your 
five hundred dollar, a thousand dollar inflatable. What I'm looking at here is a missile launcher, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, their their money has been going. They, their stock has been going way way up. Why? Well, because remember the Ukraine thing's still happening. So that's what they want to do: ship in a whole bunch of inflatable stuff into Ukraine and hope that the Russians shoot at them. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. But it was kind of fun. Hmm. It's illusion to a whole new level. Do you think right, the, next... the inflatable um, military stuff to make fake war too? There you go. Yes. Yeah. I, I, there's all sorts of fun uses for it. I mean, yeah. most things have more than one use. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, you could. Uh, you could do. I mean, I'd save them for an alien invasion. You just start blowing up all sorts of like, look, you know, come on, spaceships, and then they just set them on fire. Okay, next one down is from how much time we got? We have plenty of time. Next one down is from dailymail.com. This is such a weird sci-fi type of story because it ties into movies that have been around been around for years, but I gotta bring it up because I think it's sketchy at best. I don't buy it and Plus, it's a really slippery slope. So the, the, the headline says, Proof scientists can now read your mind. AI turns people's thoughts into images with 80% accuracy. The new AI-powered algorithm can reconstruct your thoughts into images. It produced 1,000 photos with 80% accuracy from the brain activity. Uh-huh. So when you scroll down to... There's two sections there, Karen. Original and AI generated. So people would look at images and then based on the electrodes that were on your head, the software would draw what you were looking at and fill in the blanks and sort of make its own thing. Now, you know, is this even functional technology? I don't know, because if it was, I would think the military would commandeer it almost immediately. It's not like it's reading your emotions or anything like that. It's just like what I'm seeing is it's reading visual cues. I don't know what you would do with that right away. Have you seen movies like uh, no, Minority Report or Brainstorm from back in the day or The Discovery, which, because remember, it, here, here'd be the ultimate goal here, right? And that is if you could actually set up, hook up electrodes to somebody's brain and start you know, reading thoughts, could it be admissible in court? Right? You, could you think of it's like, oh yeah, this I was at the robbery. This is how it went, or the scary stuff, which is from the discovery. Let's say somebody died and you hook up the electrodes. Then, then what happens? Don't know. Don't know. But I don't know. I don't know if I buy it. It's, a, it's an interesting little story, but I, I'm not. I'm not sure where it's going. And maybe just wait for some a startup company to, uh, to to generate some some interest. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you scroll down, there's there's the um, electrode hooked up to the guy's head. Yeah, it's creepy. Yeah, it is creepy. And another reason, by the way, why the you know when people say, oh, you know, virtual reality will be sort of like the Matrix thing, you know, where they just jam a big spike in the back of your neck <laughs> type thing. It's like, yeah, that's a great idea in theory, but it won't happen. There's n there is no insurance company that would insure for that because it's, it's, it goes into the whole medical procedure malpractice thing. Never, you know, same same reason why we talked about why the, the Purge movies would never happen. Purge, hey, like the idea. It's super fun, exciting, but no insurance company would ever allow that to happen because people would just, the arsonists would just go out and just burning down entire city blocks and mm -hmm. with no with no punishment. You know, the property damage that would, that would happen on any given night? No, Purge would never happen. Uh, hooking virtual reality up straight into your noodle, tough to do. Self-driving cars, also tough to do because because of insurance stuff. If you, in fact, let, we have a couple minutes. Let me bring this up really fast, which is it kind of goes into you want to see um yeah power surge while hooked up yeah yeah say you had one of those electrodes hooked up to your brain, and then all of a sudden a brownout happened, or there was a power surge. What happens to you then? And then then what happens? Um, there was a movie. Uh, shoot, I just lost my thought on that one. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Urge. Ah, it'll come back to me. Okay. Last clown world, which is TMZ.com. An example of what not to do, right? Lufthansa Airlines, I believe they are German, 
the, the major airline in Germany. Mums the word on flight from hell. Passengers asked to delete photos and videos. <laughs> okay. The flight from hell might have never become public if the airline had its way. This according to a new report. So a passenger named Rolanda Schmidt told Insider when the plane plunged 4,000 feet in extreme turbulence. That's a lot. That's a, that is a lot. That's almost a mile. It is. That's really Jesus. a lot. And it's like you're flying and they had food. Right, the dinner service was in effect, and all of a sudden, you nose down four thousand feet. Oh, good lord! Turning dinner service into what looked like a fraternity food fight. A flight attendant got on the PA and asked everyone on the plane to delete photos and videos of the chaotic scene. Okay, yeah. what? You, th such a bad idea because when you tell somebody not to do that, well, of course, what do you think they're going to do? It's like, oh, I'm going to film it. I'm going to send it straight to TMZ as soon as we land, which they did. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and the flight attendant allegedly made the request twice. Um, said she, the passengers say, said the other, the, the others were just like, what? What the hell? Uh, during the second announcement, the flight attendant reportedly said she was making the request to protect the privacy of those on board. No. Uh, Smith said the that particular passenger says she's dealing with a concussion, a bruised arm, and possible fractured hip as a result of the four thousand foot plunge. And of course, this video stuff right here is going to be go a long way towards her what I would consider a very nice settlement from the German airline because yeah, looks bad. Matthew McConaughey's wife Camilla Alves was on the plane. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scroll down, scroll down. Yeah, she's there. She's um one of the passengers was Matthew McConaughey's wife Camilla Alves, 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 who posted video with the caption to respect the privacy of those around me. That's all I am showing. But the plane was in chaos and the turbulence kept on coming. So she did basically what the flight attendant said. Nobody else did though. <laughs> Back to, who knows? Maybe she was the one that told the the flight attendant, just like you should tell everybody to erase this. You know, who knows? I doubt it. Something you never ever do. I mean, you, you could. I mean, it is a it is a silly request because everyone's going to film everything anyway, right? They're, they're they're telling them not to is just going to you're, you're just you're just reminding people that haven't gotten their phones out to get their phones out. That's all they're going to do. <laughs> Oh, whatever. But yeah, the you have dinner no power service. Here. The what? I said, you know how you have no power here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All you can people. do is delay the upload. That's all you're going to do. No one's going to be confiscating phones. No one's going to be. Yeah. Is his wife um, German? Uh, no, she's like from Brazil or some shit. What she was doing. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Well, that's basically it. Good night, everybody. <laughs> we're um, <laughs> no, we're um, we're gonna go to break here in a little bit. I I do want to mention real fast because I I happen to watch it and I, I you know me I I don't give that many bad reviews on on movies, but anyone that I and I did not watch the Oscars recently. Peanut and I were talking about this earlier, which was. The Oscars were, were last weekend. I did not watch them, but a film called Everything Everywhere All at Once won everything. Uh, best actress, best supporting actress, best supporting actor. Not complaining about the actors, but the movie was terrible. It was the biggest letdown of any best picture movie I've ever... It gets its best picture of the year, right? And But because of the pandemic, everything's been watered down and watered down. I mean, come on, there's not that many productions out there the number of movies that are being released has really, really, really dropped. And so this thing won Best Picture, and it was god-awful. I'm sorry for the people that liked it. I don't know how you could, though. Uh, you know, if you're you're talking about a, a multiverse movie, comedy, yeah, there you go. It was up against Top Gun and Avatar and 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 Elvis, you know, the, the Elvis movie. The, mm -hmm. And the, the Elvis movie I thought was brilliant, you know, and I thought it was very, very well done. But none of those three. No, no, this thing took it. And uh, but I was happy for Brendan Fraser because he didn't win Best Actor after all these years. Brendan Fraser. Everyone thought he was out. All you people should be ashamed of yourselves. Oh yeah, that's right. He was not out. Just because look, he he's ne he was never going to keep keep up that sex symbol image for that long, 
right? You know, he he was he you know he did the Mummy, you know, the mm-hmm. whole Indiana Jones kind of knockoffy thing, and then he did George of the Jungle, where he might as well have been a hair commercial. You know, he was toe tanned and you mean Encino and, Man, yeah, and Encino Man, and uh, um, he, he had so many cool movies, and then all of a sudden he just fell out of favor with Hollywood for like monkey bones yeah that thing yeah he did a few dogs of course but but hollywood ignored him for a while and then he he did a movie about um a severely overweight person i think like 600 pounds and uh, called whale yeah and yeah blast from the past also very excellent uh and and whale it did didn't resonate with a ton of people but uh but it got got enough for him to get a best actor so good for you that's... Die happy, die happy now. Yeah. All right. Um, what else we got? Let me look at the phone calls. Um, let me give a shout out to Peaceful who gave us a super chat and UFO hunters and also Claptrapism gifted ten more memberships on my channel. Cool. So there you go. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. Phone number to call in, by the way, when we come back from the break. In fact, we might. Eh, we're kind of too close. We'll pick up calls when we come back from the break. The phone number to call in is 848-222-2480. That's 848-222-2480, which has some numerology built into it, and we didn't do it deliberately, believe it or not. But when we come back from the break, we will pick up 505-202, not 516, because he's just listening, 559-708-715-727. I'm kind of curious about the Washington, D.C. one. It's right. just listed as Washington, D.C. Is it an agency? Oh, God, I hope so. Are we in trouble? Well, <laughs> normally I'll get a text if that happens. It's like, that's off limits. Uh, or can you spin that in another direction? It's like, eh. no. Or David Weiss will, will you know, my overlord, he'll, um, uh, he'll yes. send me something. Does he still listen to the show? Who knows? All I know yes, is he, he gets he gets cheap margaritas and eggs currently. That's all he's probably doing is, is eating <laughs> eighty cent eggs, and uh, no, it's eighty. Is it like a buck a dozen down there? Yeah, like a buck a dozen. That's why they're why they're bootlegging them up here. All right. Um, anything else before we go to break? Um, anything that you can think of? UFO Hunter says, thank you for having Mark live. <laughs> yeah. Okay. First off, you notice that Karen's camera never goes out of focus, but mine does. I'm like 164th vampire on my father's side. <laughs> and so I am extremely hard to photograph. And I'm not kidding you. Seriously, I've had professional photographers take hundreds of shots and then look at their camera and they're going, what the hell's wrong? You know, shaking the <laughs> camera, rattling it. I am one of the few people that you can actually say, oh, yeah, he's better live. You know, like bands, you know, they're better live. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally cool live. Try to photograph me. See what happens. You'll be like, is that the same guy? Nope. Some people, are, some people are photogenic. I am the opposite of that. I am only good live. There you go. I'm not going to, I'm not going to shy away from it. It's fine. All right. All right. So with that, Hey, Karen, let's go to break. That means music. You got to play the music. It is playing. Are you sure? Yeah, I just don't have it on monitor on because this is a replacement commercial that I had to make for, and I forgot to put the monitor part on. Yeah, I was about to say, you know, because when this particular recording, they're not going to hear music. They're just going to hear me whispering. Oh, there it is. Please support local flat earthers. Grounded. That was a singing bowl. Yes, it was. Like a plug into an outlet, nature is a key into the mind. Once there, it can clean out old you talking? leftovers and nourish the mind and body. Huh? Life is regained. The road you're talking, but your lips aren't moving. As clarity and self-awareness <laughs> return. It's like a ventriloquist. Herbs, roots, algae, and fungi have helped many of us heal, move closer to our goals, and gain control of true priorities over carnal desires. 
Join us in leaving the chemical material world and enter into the natural realm from farm to farm. These finest creations are handmade and are more potent than anything your corner co-op has to offer. Our products, excluding our tinctures, are made to order to assure freshness and maximum effectiveness, fusing together healing herbs with tasty counterparts to bring out full potentials. There is so much joy in working with the natural world given to us by our Creator. Let's take part. thing to remember here if you're making still water it's always flat always level so every little line that you put in it must be basically flat you can go anywhere you want to go with it but you have to keep them straight in still water it's always flat always level Welcome back, Strange World, part three of four. It's you, me, and the always stellar Karen B. With her really, really cool hand tattoos. And I actually thought that, um, again, your grandfather, Alistair Crowley, um, <laughs> I thought I I thought he had really elaborate tattoos on his hands. He did not. I don't even know if he had ever, any tattoos. I don't think he had got any tattoos on his head or his hands <laughs> at all. So you absolutely just smoke him. He would be proud. All right, let's. I know that rumor is going to spread, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know if that's better or worse than the ex porn star one. Oh yeah, when you worked for Vivid from uh, two thousand one to two thousand six. And again, lucky for you that there is no star in that universe that looks even remotely like you. You have a unique look to you, so. Otherwise, people would have sent them to me by now. Be like, is this her? Is this her? Nope. Nope. No one's even sent me a single thing. But I'm sure 
certain people have asked. Well, I did have people asking me, did you really do that? Because I've been looking. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, don't listen to Mark. Please don't listen to Mark. <laughs> nobody, even, I, nobody even fabricated one to me, which was amazing. I was like, really? You don't even bother with all the Photoshop gurus that are out there? Peanut says, I'll find one. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. Sorry, every time I hear the Mr. Crowley, I keep thinking, you know, I wasn't a huge Ozzy fan back in the day. I was a, kind of a Black Sabbath fan, but I wasn't a big Ozzy fan. And so when he did that song, you know, Mr. Crowley, nah, 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 it's like, eh, it's all right. But I, I don't think a lot of kids got it. They get it now. If he released it now, I'd be like, oh, it's so cool. The beta tapes. Bait, wait, Peanut says beta tape. Beta tapes in 2001? Come on, man. <laughs> They, we were even past the giant DVDs in 2001. We were in normal DVDs, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let's grab our first phone call from possibly New Mexico 505. You are unmuted. Mark, Karen, Strange World. Hey, hey I love you guys. Hey, uh, first, I got I to gotta get this out here. Uh, that happy, happy wedding to that uh newlywed couple over in india that uh <laughs> that that father was very smart and very quick thinking oh that man's fast on his feet <laughs> i yeah. i uh, what i would have loved to watch the video and watch him like cool. snap his fingers a couple times hey you other daughter get in here <laughs> <laughs> never let a tragedy go i'm just waste. curious how many other daughters he has I don't know, but it, apparently he wanted, had really wanted to marry him off. It's like it was a two for one. It's sort of dark when I say that, but it's true. It was a two for Ooh. one. One, he didn't have to worry about it anymore. Well, because, you know, suddenly. And the other one, it's like, oh, hey. The groom, that would have been a whole other thing. The groom would have been like, okay, we're doing this, huh? And they did. Yeah, I hope I hope the funeral didn't interrupt the, the honeymoon. But I don't know if they do honeymoons over there. That's a good question. Do they do honeymoons in India? I would imagine they do, given how their weddings are far more, um, far more elaborate than ours. They just the, India is is the very definition of pageantry. I had no idea how much it was until I watched an action movie that they released from Bollywood. If you want to know where the the term um, Bollywood came from, I believe it is from it's a mixture of Bombay and Hollywood get it mm -hmm. bollywood and there's a movie right. called Tri triple r which is not necessarily a knockoff of triple x but you watch that movie and it's just freaking pageantry and the old the only thing that bugs me about indian movies is at some point in the movie they will break out into a dance contest and singing contest for no apparent reason the, the lead actors wow. will just start singing you know it'll be like a like a like a dance off you know, or do the, and it's just, it's, it's like, why? In fact, I tell you, it's like, you know, you do a search for this. That's just tradition. They will do it. They, they, they will not break away from that. It's like, doesn't matter how much it could be a plane crash. Hmm. And then some, somewhere along the line, survivors. And then they, at the end that during the credits, they will be, everyone will be alive again. Anyone that died during the film, everyone will be alive dancing on a big stage. It'd be a big production. Just mind bending. Anyway, do go on. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I've only seen one Bollywood movie, and I and I must admit that that's exactly what happened. I can't even remember the name of it, but Slum, that's Slum Dog right. Millionaire, Best Picture winner that was in from, from, from that's not Bollywood. Yeah, that was is that it. technically that was a Bollywood it. You're right. movie? That's Bollywood. Yeah, that was a good movie, though. That that oh. was the first Bollywood Best Picture winner. Yeah, that was a good movie. It, it wasn't bad. I liked it, but but I didn't understand. It's like, why are you guys yeah. dancing and singing? Why? And like, then it's like, oh, okay, that's just what you do. Yeah. If you ever see ch colored chalk explosions, you know you're in an Indian film or a tiger. There's a tiger running around in the movie. <laughs> anyway, what else you got? Well, well, you know, I was I was cruising those space uh, fake space stories before the show, and. Uh, I wanted to bring up the the ISS one that had to uh, do the uh, maneuver. Oh yeah, uh, the avoidance maneuver they called in the article to dodge yet another piece of space junk, and that just happened today apparently. Um, 
this uh, the, you know, you know the the Russian uh, space capsule. They call this thing the Progress MS twenty two cargo capsule. Mm. By the way, colorful name. The Russians are uh, not very Russians good at names. There. Um, I guess it. Yeah, Russians don't <laughs> name stuff very well. Yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, I was expecting something, something a little more colorful, but um, yeah, th this thing apparently uh, they're claiming it fired its thrusters for 135 seconds to move the station safely. They oh, adjusted nice. it to 260 miles above the Earth, and then um, they're saying that this has happened a few times, uh, and I guess this happened again, like on March 6th, and again, this Russian contingent that's up there okay so this is what's odd about the story mm -hmm. at the end of the story they talk about in 2022 the iss had to perform two separate avoidance movers to dodge debris created by a russian anti-satellite weapons test uh conducted in 2021 that right. was condemned by the way um there's cancellation of spacewalks and astronauts have to take shelter um but What's interesting about this is the Russians are both the good guys and the bad guys in the story. It starts with them saving the day, and then, and then it, they're, they're, they're actually to blame for the space junk. So that's what I thought was interesting about that. Um, but maybe Space Force or NASA could start up a, a garbage department or a trash cleanup. Maybe that's one of the angles they're pushing for besides some more war propaganda with this one. There's a lot of avenues I guess they could go with this, though. Yeah. Yeah. Again, they're exploring just about every every aspect they can right now to get the fight started, as it were. And so far, this is not working again. Russian fighter shoots down one of our drones. Nobody thinks it's going to escalate. So it doesn't. So and as far as the space station is concerned, I don't know what they're going to do. But yes, Space Force could save us. Everybody knows that. They, they are the elite force. Space force. <laughs> the elite. Yeah. yeah, they sure are. Yep, the, Starship Troopers. The only other thing, I don't know if you saw this day. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You're good. Oh, yeah. The only the only other one I saw, it, it was kind of a boring week for these stories besides that one. But the, I guess UK, did you see that city? They're, they're, they're building up. Uh, I guess they got a space city for... For research, for all for space, for, for manufacturing and development and Leicester. Um, but I was thinking, man, they better... Uh, they better stop um, working on that and start working on their defense system underwater for that Russian missile that might uh, take the, that the tidal wave out. torpedo. So, yeah, yeah, the tidal wave torpedo. Now that had a cooler name than this uh, space capsule, I remember. Yeah. So, yeah. Again, if uh, I, and again, I I'm not a huge warmonger. Sometimes I am, but right this very second, I'm not. <laughs> Which is, if if Russia ever decides to start something in Europe. England, man, you better batten down the hatches. <laughs> it's gonna get ugly. Well, Russia, Russia doesn't forget anything, and they remember all your ninjas. And yeah, I, I don't know what they've got in store for England, but uh, but they're gonna. You, I can almost hear the Russians cracking their knuckles in the background, getting ready for this. Anyway, a anything else? No, it's pretty much it. I, but you know, I'm wondering, like you, are 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 we the only ones that are actually seeing these stories <laughs> uh, the, on these the, fake space stories? Because you know, I'm not hearing them from anybody else. And even if I say something to somebody, they're like, "What?" Yeah, exactly. No, the NPCs, the drones that are out there, all the sheep, they're not doing anything. Um. Oh, hey, by the way, peanut peanut gallery did mention that the Russians do have the Satan missile now. It's an imposing name, yeah. but it's not the most creative in the world, right? The Russians are on one end. You have the Japanese on the far right. end. They they name their missile, you know, the 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 purple sparkles triangle or something like that. It's something really really weird that gets lost in translation. But I'm sure they think it's something. But um, but yeah, no, no, but, you know, the NPCs don't know anything. They're they're just they're, there's so many drones out there just walking through life. But it's all right. We're here. We're opening minds as fast as we can, hoping to yep. get a few more. So, anyway, we're having fun while we're doing it. Yes, we are. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll I'll let you guys get to the other calls, and uh, let's see. Shout out to Jesse and Brittany. Shout out to Zulu. Thanks for all that uh, 
um, giant info, Zulu. I keep looking through it. And, uh, of course, Jan and Dallas. Keep it flat, everybody. See you, Mark. See you, Karen. All right. See ya. No, my, yeah. my, my clock actually says 11, 11, 11 right now, by the way. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why? How? Why, why would your clock say 11, 11? You're like three. You're supposed to be three hours. Back. Wait, am I, am I off? No, mine says eight, nine, 10, 11. Well, no, mine's mine. Eleven, eleven is is where you are, but I mean, I see eight, eleven, but I see eleven, eleven because of the whole. Whatever, yeah. I don't care. Don't judge me. All we're right, we're moving on to the next call, which is two o two, two o two. Have you called in before, Mark? I am not the agency. I control the agency. Hi, Karen. I have a comment. Then a question. I'll listen to the response off air. I just want to say I love the Strange World podcast. They help me a lot when I'm on those long plane rides. My son, Hunter, introduced me to your show, Mark. I've been hooked ever since. My question is, are you able to help my son, Hunter? He is obsessed with cameras. What type of camera should he get to see long distance? I'll take my answer off the air. Hot sex. <laughs> wow. That is awesome. All right. I will I will mute you, whoever, whoever you are. That is great. If you didn't pick that up, they were using a, a, a Joe Biden emulator. That was perfect. That was creepy. That was what well, the only problem was that that <laughs> that it was it was clearer and more precise than than the actual president. Well, Biden talk, yeah, that guy was talking way more clear than Biden talks. But yeah, yeah but, that but the so tone creepy. that the pitch was great. That was great. Um, that as was far like as Biden long, twenty years ago, long distance cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Peanut says, "Come on, man." Uh, no, that's that's great. That was really great. That was totally worth it. And it's from a, from a DC thing, so I don't know who you are, but that's awesome. The uh, uh, the cameras to look at not long distance. Uh, what, what are the big popular choices right now? The P one thousand. If you mm -hmm. want to do it on a budget, P one thousand. Well, P P nine hundred. The P nine hundred can make observations that bust the globe all day long, and it's half the price of the P one thousand. But yes, but, the P one thousand is good too. That's that's state of the art. And then uh, if you're doing night vision, uh, anything night vision, if you're just looking up in the sky, I would recommend the night owl. Uh, or you could use it for nighttime laser stuff. You could probably spot a laser across a body of water easier than, than normal um, binoculars or cameras. Uh, anyway, the night owl in a 5X, 5 power or higher, Gen 1 is just fine. You don't need Gen 2 or Gen 3 military grade to, uh, to look at spaceships and UFOs and stuff like that because they are up there. Lots of them. Mm -hmm. But thank you for whoever that was. Uh, that uh, Yeah, so those recommendations were for Hunter. <laughs> uh, let's go out to possibly Fresno. People actually still live in Fresno? We'll find out. 559, are you out in Fresno? I'm in the foothills above Fresno, about 25 miles away up in the mountains south of Yosemite. Oh, cool. Nice. Right on. So, yeah, um, one of the one of the benefits there is that I can look out across the San Joaquin Valley and see the coastal mountains that are 70 miles away. And I've I've got pictures where I've gotten I've taken pictures of the coastal mountains from Mount Diablo near San Francisco all the way south to I believe the Orchard Peak to the south. There's 200 miles between those two mountains. And it's a perfectly straight line and you can identify the mountains. So that pretty much confirms that there isn't any curvature. So, um, nice. Absolutely. The other, <clears throat> another, another fun thing is uh, the, the term David White. David White is the name of, of a, actually the name of a company that makes levels and transits. So if you're looking to verify that the earth is flat, then you use a David White level. <laughs> cool. <laughs> now, another, on, a, on another topic, um, one of the cameras I'm using right now for long distance photography is a 50 times zoom um, Fujifilm FinePix S1. It's no longer made but it has a 50 to one zoom from a, an effective 24 millimeter to a 1200 millimeter lens. And I've gotten some spectacular pictures handheld even of the moon with it, as well as all manner of other pictures. But 
And another another quick point with respect to the Russian issue, um, I believe Putin is on our side. That everything that's going on in Ukraine is uh, for the destruction of, of of goodness. You know, I mean, they're a trafficking point, they're a bio labs point, and NATO was attempting to set up a situation to be able to very quickly attack and destroy Moscow. So I think Putin was the good guy in this issue. Yeah. I Again, I mean, if you've listened to the, the show for a while, you probably know my opinion on Russia. Russia has done the heavy lifting uh, for a lot of our efforts for a while. And in this case, I just think they, they want to be do their own thing. I don't think they want to go with the NWO. I think they want to be like, yeah, we don't need you. And but the thing is, we well, again, the, go ahead. Uh, Putin, the, the Putin that we're seeing is not the original Putin. that was a KGB agent. Ah. That Putin was three inches taller than this one. Ah. Uh, the, the bad one was, was executed long ago. And the replacement is doing things like banning the uh, Monsanto from the country so, and, and making Russia a prime source of organic foods. You know, mm-hmm. organic wheat comes from Russia now. Um, there, he's, I don't know, I, huh? I, it's, it's a rather strange transition, you know, to, to think from the, the Cold War till now. Because I'm old enough to to remember the whole course. I mean, I'm 73 years old, huh. so um, I was I was worrying about atomic weapons in 1960s. And in fact, with respect to that, I'm one of the few callers who uh, actually witnessed a fusion device being detonated over the Pacific in 1962. It was called operation uh fishbowl and the device was called starfish prime it was approximately two megatons and it was used to ionize the surface the inner surface of our fishbowl aka dome aka firmament to allow them to then reflect microwave type energy off of that dome thereby simulating what we now are being are, are they're calling satellites we don't have satellite communication we have communication which is reflecting signals off of the dome which could not be reflected until they ionized it with that nuclear warhead hmm. and i watched that one go off in july of 1962 from the shores of oahu it oh. also was the one that started the interest in electromagnetic pulses emt because that particular uh, experiment 900 miles away from oahu caused 300 street lights in honolulu to be destroyed it just blew them instantly and it also took out one television station and took out a microwave station on the island of Kauai. so um yeah i watched that flash so not too many people watch nuclear explosions right. well thank you thank you very much well, and, and uh keep yeah. keep keep listening thank you for calling in have a great evening all right you too oh uh, let's pick up at least one more before the break maybe two we'll see uh this one is 715 oh shit. hello hi have you called in before uh last week I um, didn't get picked up oh well now you are so what are you gonna do with it <laughs> well i finally made it before 400. <laughs> hey oh have you have you um, been trying yeah i was about to say and by the way that's 400 weeks guys mm-hmm. that, that's 400 weeks worth of show that's a long time that's eight years so what uh what what's on your Actually mind? Actually, is my first time calling in. Hello. Hey. Also a young guy. Where where are you? I thought today I'd bring the story. So here it goes. So in school, I was figured that I was being lied to sometime 
between school hours. So on graduation day at 2015, I told myself, I'm going to find out the truth no matter what. So pretty much figured out many things, you know, medicine, uh, the way the world works and the flat earth, like that happened around 2020, literally a month after I found, um, yeah, literally a month after I found out uh, that, um, shoot. See, I'm kind of nervous. That's all right. It, it, it's your first time. There's only like what five, oh, yeah. six, six million people listening. Tops. <laughs> you're you're totally okay. Plus, plus, I'm I'm scanning your latitude and longitude. It, but you're kind of out of the way. So a drone strike, maybe forty five minutes off. <laughs> you, you got you got you got. I'll give you a few minutes because yeah, hey, we're going to go to break after your call anyway. So what? Uh, it's all right. Keep talking. I I'm not going to yell at you. Karen might. I won't. Oh, stop it. All right, Karen probably will. I still won't. I was just going to say that literally a month after I found a full moon during daylight time, which pretty much confirmed, oh, yeah, Earth must be flat. There you go. That's pretty much it. Sure. It's pretty much the end of all that. Cool. Have, have, you gone to, have, you, have you gone to any meetups or thought about going to any conferences or getting the app from the, our overlord, David yeah. Weiss? I'd like to do but I don't think we have enough money right now for it. Yeah. Well, it's all right. No worries. I mean, we do stuff. What, what's what's the closest big city to where you are? Minneapolis? Um, Milwaukee? Middle Wisconsin. Middle Medicine. Maybe Minneapolis. Hmm. Chicago is pretty far. You know, as, as the weather gets better, there's more meetups up, up in your area. They don't cost anything. All you have to do is drive, drive, drive over to it. But, um, but I'm, I'm glad that you're, that you, that you, you know, do, what other channels do you listen to besides ours? Um, not about, like, like John Morgo. Um, cool. I don't care to be anymore. I really don't appreciate religious views at all. Yeah. Eric. That's just me. Eric, no, please. Eric has a few attitude issues, so you don't have to apologize for apologizing for. Uh, otherwise, uh, Quantum Racer is a pretty good guy. I saw, even though he doesn't black other people. <laughs> but yeah, I we got a few characters. Off and on again with the universe. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I'll tell you much I'll better. tell you what. I mean, you did you did fine for your first call. Seriously, scale from one to ten. I'm not going to give you a ten because you, you're supposed to shout out, you know, Karen and I on a regular basis. You know, <laughs> seriously, we run on props, <laughs> so <laughs> no, we don't. Um, but no, but thank you, thank you. Seriously, I, I'm glad that you uh, that you af finally got through after after all this time. And again, you made it before 400. That's a big deal. Did you say you graduated from school in 2015? Yeah. From high That's school? Wow. So you're young. High school, yeah. You're young. You figured it out Very a young. lot earlier than most of us did. So. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Right. You should be proud like of yourself. I, said, I just said to myself, <laughs> like I said, I just said to myself, I'm going to figure out the truth no matter what. And good I for you. That's what it takes, man. All you have to have is like a genuine love for truth and you'll find it. Yep. All right. Well, uh, any, any uh, parting words before we go to our last break? You, caller? Uh, I, guess, you know, I guess I should shout out to everybody who's been listening. Yeah. Uh, All right. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, and again, thank you for listening to the show. We appreciate it a whole lot. And uh, good luck continuing on your journey. Yep. All right. Have a good one. All right. With that, 
first time caller. We get so many first time callers that finally get through. Pretty it always much? stuns yeah. me, by Great. the way. It's, it's like, I've been listening to your show for four years. Finally, you decide to call. It's like, really? You can talk to us about anything. Just call and say, hey. There are people who don't, they don't like talking in front of people. That's the thing. You know, a lot of people don't like that. Yeah, but I didn't talk- like it. It's it, it'd be different if it, you know if we we open the show with Strange World, you know is is filmed in front of a live studio audience. If we did some something like that, oh sure, you might feel ner- nervous, but mm. don't feel nervous about that. All right, we will do. We're going to take our final break, and when we come back, we're going to pick up Peanut. Am I picking up when we come back that he, the person that's routing through Arizona, but is supposedly from South America? We're going to do that one when we come back from the break. He's typing. He's typing. He's trying to type. He's about to hit send. (laughs) Yes. Okay. We'll pick up that up. We will pick up uh, the guy from South America when we come back. Karen, the final break music, please. Might be listening. CIA? Maybe. Aliens? Probably. Globalists? Definitely. I may have already said too much. We have what you need. Really? It's flat. I'm listening. And round. Go on. And delicious. Tell me the secret. tomorrow we move around quite a bit ah a mobile command center a strong strategy i like where your head's at anything else Mm, i was never here Long live Flat Earth. Long live Flat Earth.
Welcome back to Strange World Part 4 of 4. It's you, me, and the always incomprehensible Karen B. Hey, I'm, uh, by the way, we're giving away at the meetup in Southern California this Saturday, which I'll be attending. We're giving uh, Flat Earth trinkets that were sent by Stephanie, if I'm not mistaken. All sorts of keychains, necklaces. And uh, so all you have to do is walk up to me and say, hey, Mark, can I have one of those cool things? And the first person that comes up to me uh, and says, hey, can I get the school? There's only one of these. The Space Sucks hat. I will give that away to them at the meetup. So further incentive. So get off your butts on Saturday and drive on the uh, Southern California freeway to get to us. I think we're on Sunset Beach somewhere, but I can't give away the address. All right. Where do we leave off? Oh, that's right. We got to pick up that guy. All right. 480. Where are you and why is it that you seem to be piping through Arizona? Are you actually in South America right now? Hello, Mark. Hello, Karen. Yeah, it's Jay from Chile. Hey. I've, I've spoken. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. What's up? Good. Yeah. No, I just, uh, I'm actually from Arizona, but lived in Hollywood for many, many years. So, um, Southern California for like 15 years. Well, are you going to be in the LA area? Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Son, like... I'm flying into, uh, John Wayne, Orange County airport and, uh, hopping over to sunset oh, cool. beach on, on the coast. Nice. Nice. I wish I could make it out there. I never did make it to a meetup while I was up there. No, I'm I'm in the backwoods of South America now, so I probably won't be there this weekend. But um, wow. yeah, well, uh, I had this kind of thought, um, you know, because I'm down here closer to the Antarctica, and I always kind of thought about it like, how is it that nobody really has gone on? Like, you, you know, if you were to go straight south to the antarctica and you said as soon as you kind of saw the coast you would go west right so right. um you fly straight down and then you see the antarctica you see the coast and then you take a right so you're going west and then over a certain amount of time if it's a continent you would be kind of going around it doing kind of a big left hand turn kind of like yep. now right a big left yep um but if it's but if it's a flat earth the way our model is then you would be kind of curving inwards to the right all the time right well not just that but well, you wouldn't you wouldn't run into the same place meaning if it is it, and i i thought of this oh, years ago which is if you wanted to measure antarctica if it is truly like a snow covered version of australia then with any sort of plane with heavy fuel capacity, you could circle the whole thing in, I don't know, less than 12 hours. Maybe maybe a little more, maybe a little less, hard to say. But all, in fact, all you need is to you know get one plane in one boat. You put the boat in one spot and you have the plane, just make sure that Antarctica is in, in its visual range and you have them fly in one direction. And sooner or later, hours and hours later, you should run back into that boat again, right? You don't even need two planes to do it. Right. However, what has changed is the Antarctic right. Treaty. The Antarctic Treaty was updated, so now you can't even be within visual range of Antarctica without special permits. And so that it, it was almost like they they saw that test coming, and they they made sure that it was almost impossible to do. So they, I think it's the six. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Karen, I think it's the sixtieth parallel. Yeah, sound about right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, you can't you can't go below the 60th parallel without a uh, without a permit. Yeah, that's yeah, that's. Crazy. But I like but I like your Did idea. You see, there... Go ahead. What's that? Sorry. No, no. Go ahead. You're good. You're good. Um. Yeah. You know, I was just going to ask if you guys had seen on um I forget whose channel it was. There was this little. Uh, it was like a. It was called um, South America or Antarctica or something. It was about this guy from Norway who went down to Argentina. He he just got in a boat. Um, he's basically just taught himself how to sail. 
Yeah. He went down, he got a couple of crew members in Argentina. One of them was an American dude and the other guy was an Argentinian dude. Yeah. And they, they went to Antarctica. And it wasn't, it wasn't they, a guy named Jarl Van de Hoy, was it? Uh, you know what? I, he, it was such a Norwegian name that I didn't really commit it to memory, but it um, was super interesting. Um, I mean, did, was it the guy that was eventually definitely they, they, they pressed charges on him? Was it that guy? No, no. These these oh, guys okay. went down there, and they were the the Argentinian dude started freaking out, and um, they actually they stopped, and they were they were on the banks of what they claimed was the Antarctica, and um, they just kind of explored around for a little bit, and then came back up. Um, I'll try and send you guys the link. I'll look for it because I know I know how to get to it. But um, okay. it's a super interesting thing. But it just kind of made me think, like, how? I mean, they, how could they really? There's not enough people for them to really enforce a treaty all the way around the Antarctica. You know what I mean? Like, it would have to be pretty spotty the way they would have to do that. There's not. I, I, I mean, how could they? How could you how could you enforce it? Well, you remember, most most of the enforcement is done naturally, meaning most people don't want to get anywhere near the place because the the negative reinforcements when it comes to weather, especially boats, boats. I mean, come on, icebergs are the scariest thing ever for a ship captain that and when you have to file a flight. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to file a flight plan. Well, you're flying it. You're filing it way in advance. So you don't have to have a massive force protecting it. You let the automated systems kick in and you see these people coming from a long, long way off, the few that do. And then, you know, you allocate your resources accordingly. It's it's pennies on the dollar. It's cheap to enforce Antarctica because no, because nobody wants to go there anyway. Plus, the last part is the actual Antarctic Treaty itself means the private corporations aren't just running amok, setting up shop down there. So. Between the three, I oh don't know. You could absolutely keep that place safe with with minimal intervention. I mean, yeah, you could probably get you know a couple other countries to kick in, but the budget for that would be nothing compared to other things. So it could be done. I could do it. Well, I mean, I I can see how it, it kind of would be, but check it out. I'm going to put it in the chat right now. Here sure. it is. But as far as what you're saying about it, as far as somebody just sailing down there, oh, yeah, a boat has a better chance of getting through than a plane. A plane is almost – you're never going to be able to do it. But a boat, sure, there would be gaps in the net, sure. Because you you the people – the if you could find a captain that would ignore the icebergs, oh, yeah, if they're crazy enough to do that, then what do you do? Then you hit the beach. Mm, what are you going to do then? You're going to go – how are you going to traverse – you know, you got to hit a, a low – you know something that's right on sea level, and then the end. Then your options are limited. But whatever. Yeah, send me the article. Yeah, you get a chance. I'd love to see it. It's. I just I just threw it in there. I'll throw it in there again. Watch it. It'll come up right about now. Yeah, you, you, you're. My name is Jay Burkamp. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't have it in my box, but I'll I'll, I'll check I mean, it out. It could be that there. It could be that they're the islands, you know, those islands that are kind of on their way, but they basically came straight off the tip of Argentina and Chile, right where, you know, the Tierra de Fuego and went okay. straight across. And it was crazy. And there was definitely bunches of icebergs and they had some really sketchy, sketchy scenes, but it's a, it's like a 45 minute little documentary, but it's super cool to watch because okay. you're kind of like, could, yeah, could, I mean, why don't we all just go down there, you know? Uh, it's a nice thought, except the place is just screams go away. Um, can you email that to me as well? I don't know what chat room you're dumping this into. You know, we're on a whole bunch of chats. Yeah. But but email it to me as well. Where? What? Okay, where's... Uh, I don't have your email. I'm sorry. Everybody's got my email, man. Seriously, you could literally Google Mark Sargent's email and it will pop up on screen. But it is M Sargent, <laughs> M-S-A-R, seriously. M S A R G E N T twenty three at Comcast.net. At Comcast. All right. I'll send it over to you. Okay. Cool. Anything else? Cool. Well, great talking to you. No, just wanted to say hello and yeah. Have a Pretty great man. night. Nice talking to you guys. Well, thank you for, for calling from Chile. And just so the people know, what time is it in Chile right now? 
It's uh, 42 minutes after midnight. Oh. Yeah. He's only an hour ahead of me. Yeah, that's not so bad. I think that's Atlantic time zone. Yeah. yeah I don't even it. know. It's weird because you guys changed. So sometimes I'm three hours ahead of LA, sometimes four hours, sometimes five hours. So it changes because we don't change at the same time that the United States changes. So it's always kind of, it's, it keeps me uh, a little bit crazy because I work um, basically in Arizona and all over the US with, I basically, do virtual work so i always have to be checking what time it is because it always is changing it's a yeah it's a little bit it it happens it's not the weirdest ones i heck we had an island call in one time where the guy was actually 45 minutes behind us but it was next saturday it's weird anyway gotta let you go (laughs) so uh, but you have a you have a good time and we'll talk soon okay all right take care all right see ya uh boy did i pick up that fl- did, I, did i pick up 727 peanut i don't think i did should i pick up 727 or should I pick up well what time is it uh you know what i'm gonna pick up 904 first 904 you're on what do you got you might have to extend the call there's too much going on tonight <laughs> come on dan it's a call-in show you know the rules what do you Great. got yeah, great stuff, man. Valley Music Journey down here. Um, hey. So that was an interesting call there from Chile. Yeah, I we don't get a lot. We don't, we, we don't get a lot of was in Chile. Mm. So. Yeah, so I was down in Tierra del Fuego, and uh, I realized um, I didn't go to Antarctic because um, – some of my friends did, and I had a. I was having a surgery upcoming, and I couldn't be. Um, anyway, I was in Ushuaia. I, I waited it out. I did a couple of trips to the national parks, and that was it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you, you can't really get anywhere down there, and the water was the worst I've seen anywhere in the world. And I've been all over Alaska, Australia, many places, and um, that was the worst water I'd ever seen. So you don't just gallivant down there in a private boat so it's even if you get past you know the ocean you're going to get to the antarctic defenses i i didn't do that i'm just saying that people don't go down there recreationally no no i and again i think that's deliberate i think it's part of the design which is that because that way it makes it seem like it's your idea to turn around yeah you if if, if, most captains would be if most captains, if they even see a, not two icebergs in the same 10 square miles, they'll turn around. Be like, screw this. We are not doing this because, you know, icebergs during the day is one thing. Icebergs at night, whoa, so scary. Right, right. So. And I'll dovetail these. I'll try to make it quicker. So okay. the Google comment about the uh, South America, um, you know, there's no GPS in a lot of the ocean, too. And the guy in Hawaii that called in was talking about the uh, Operation Fishbowl. Reminded me, though, that when you get, first of all, he's right. I'm, I, I love that call. Um, you know, that man, the 73-year-old man, he knows a lot. We need to get him to call again. He probably could do a whole show. Uh, mm-hmm. But I wanted to say um, that, you know, in most of the ocean, there's no GPS, really. They're doing estimated coordinates. Right. This all kind of goes together. But um, it corresponds with them. Um, I ended up knowing a woman quite well uh, before my wife. But anyhow, she worked for um, Sergey Brin and Larry Page in Hawaii. And... Um, even their own own houses don't have GPS on them. If you try, if we want to zoom in on a house in Hawaii that's owned by one of these multinational billionaires, you won't get any coordinates. You won't find any information. It, it's just a blank spot on your GPS. Wow. And I just want to make sure that people realize that you you can't do that. So. Yeah. Um. I got more, but that's probably all I'll say tonight. It's just okay. I was in South America one time in Sao Paulo, and I uh, met several people from the intelligence agencies. 
and a lot of them were moving down that way. They've got a lot of property down there, but they got property everywhere, right? Yeah. I mean, um, they're picking out the safer countries. And if you read Deagle.com, the depopulation agenda is for the Western countries right now. And I'm not saying I know whether that's true or not. All I know is that um, eight years ago, I was told by somebody that worked for uh, one of these uh, major, you know, tech billionaire companies that they had a meeting and they're, they're all buying property on these southern islands and southern, you know, hemisplane properties because they're getting out eventually of this um, hemisplane in the north. Hmm. So, nice. yeah, weird, but hey, on a positive note, I love the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And Lowry's not here to make a joke, so I got to make some jokes. All right. Right, I haven't seen him. No, we haven't, yeah. seen, haven't had Lowry show up the last couple shows. Huh. Uh, well, he'll be back. I know that. Hey, shout out to all y'all. No Dennis tonight either, so I'm taking up his space. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, Karen, can you... Oh, hey, I didn't see the Melbourne uh, Flat Earth Festival on there. I only found one in Palm Bay, but I know you're really good about posting that. Um, Karen, so I'm looking for another Florida meetup. Well, no, don't um, go to Florida meetups. Dennis, don't go to Florida meetups. Just go to regular flat earth meetups, flat earth friendly meetups. Dan. Oh, regular. Okay, I'll recheck it. Don't call me Dennis. It's, yeah, it's Dan. It's Dan. <laughs> Did it's I say Dan. Dennis? Yeah, you said Dennis. Sorry. It's because yeah. he said Dennis earlier. That's yeah, all right. He's Dan. our brother. <laughs> yeah. it, was a, it was subliminal right. Dennis <laughs> messaging. Malo. Dennis. Right. Shout out to all you guys. All right, man. You have a good one. All right, Karen. All right. Mark, thank you so much. All right. All right. Thanks for calling. See ya. Bye-bye. Uh, I hate to do this to you, Dennis, but I got to pick up Florida first, and then I'm probably going to go to New York. I know Dennis came in on the trail end, and even though I'd love to talk to you, I really, really would. Uh, Florida, 727, it's your chance. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jay. What's up, Jay? Hey, Jay. Hello. Hey. Hey, so speaking of meetups in Florida, we're doing another one. The other one was fantastic a few weeks back. Thanks for the help. Mm -hmm. We're doing a follow-up meetup, probably going to do it monthly. It's going to be at the same place, Booker Creek Park, at uh, 1 o'clock on the first Saturday of April, so April 1st. It goes from one to four. We were there way after last time, so that's probably going to happen again. But we had a pretty good turnout, a little over a dozen people, and it was great. Cool. Awesome. Very, very cool. Anything so else? I'll uh, send you guys the details on the other one through the email again. And, yeah, that helped. A couple people heard the show and came because of that. So that yeah, that worked out well. That's why we do it. It was great. It was my first one, and, and I mean, that's, that's a moving experience, honestly. It was it was amazing. Fantastic. Right on. So yeah, thanks a lot, guys. And I'll keep you posted on when that's gonna happen and I'll let you get over to New York. All right. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Yeah, no problem. All right. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. I have to get my singing voice ready because as you know, I can sing. No, I can't. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want to be a part of it. New York, New York. <laughs> there you go. With my vagabond shoes. Uh, longing to stray. But through the very heart of it. What's happening, man? Not that good, huh? What? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hello, hello, hello. Why? How you doing tonight? Cannot complain. Not really. I mean, it's Tuesday. Made oh, it through. So yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah good calls. Good calls. I love the new callers. That's awesome shit. That's awesome stuff. Sorry, not shit. Awesome stuff. <laughs> what you're gonna stop swearing now? Background being excited. No, no. I just didn't want to be mean to new callers. I don't want them to not call. I mean, like you said. They've been listening for years and years and didn't call because they're uncomfortable. And finally, now they're getting comfortable. I don't want to 
stick them around. I mean, millions of people are listening every time. So that's true. You know, I should give I should give them the the script. And that is for anyone that, that's thinking about calling in. It's brand new. All you have to do is remember this. I I know I'm this dates me because I used to listen to radio back in the day. There's radio stations, kids. They played all, all sorts of you know fine tunes. Uh, you say all you have to do is say, it's "Hey, CDs. long time <laughs> listener, first time caller, love the show." That's it. That's all anyone says. You can hear that's been that those words have been uttered millions and millions and millions of times. Long time listener, first time caller, love the yeah. show. Just wanted to say hi, and then you know you pay homage to <laughs> the high priestess, which is Karen, and <laughs> the overlord David Weiss. And, you know, anyone else you can think of. Well, you and Peanut Gallery, too. No, 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 no. I just get You're people doing that... some stuff. You're I doing just... some stuff. I just get people <laughs> in the door. Seriously. I mean, come on. The, the last video I made literally was about me so happy that I found a song that I had lost forever. But it really did mean a lot to me. You guys are probably thinking it's so trivial. It's so random. It's like, no, man. You have no freaking idea because it was a song that was never played in the States. It was an Australian song that I had heard on a, in an American island that I didn't know it. Bastards. Freaking bastards. Anyway, what else, uh, what else is on your mind? Hey. Yeah. Just a couple things. I really didn't have too much. It was weird stuff. Like, just weird stuff. Like, there's this giant red fucking thing of uh seaweed headed towards florida it's like five thousand miles stretch of seaweed what the hell is that that. yeah very strange they call it red red something it's like red seaweed headed towards florida five yeah i saw saw it was really really huge Um, yeah yeah i was like I, i hadn't heard of it just recently and then what was weird to me and I don't know, I mean, I don't remember if you mentioned this one. I, mm. I'm pretty sure you did. Mm. But one of the objects that got shot down over Alaska by, uh, it was the north northern side in the center. I forgot the town there it was listed. But they are reporting that the pilots are stating that the item had was not a balloon. It was floating there. They don't know how it was floating. Had no propulsion. Yet they shot it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. So now, are you really telling the world or saying to the world, well, there might be actually an alien there, and now uh, are they moving towards Project Blue Beam? Or I mean, it's always a hoax. It's always bullshit that they give us. They never tell us the fucking truth. But like, what is the point of that? I yeah. mean, I thought that was significant. The, the, know, re- the reason why I I don't vote. <laughs> Yeah, the reason why I don't bring it up is the stuff like that is because because I'm is a it is a personal thing for me because UFOs are just a big tease for me right now. I used to watch them for well, years yeah, cool. with my night vision, and until I get you know until I get a group of people that something drops down below a thousand feet during the middle of the day, and you know starts doing some things or I don't know just shows up outside here over a field. I'm I'm just not going to give it much credit credibility. I'm just not. So I love that Fox no, is running no, all these I, stories. I'm not either, but I think they're setting people up for shit that they're up I, to something. I don't, I don't know. I've it just always seems it. like they're always. I mean, well, doesn't seem we know they're up to something. Yeah, yeah. I've heard I've heard this. I've heard this cry wolf story too many times. I just have. So when anyone says, "Oh, UFOs are coming," they're coming. Like no, no. I know. Yeah. I know. I got excited for a second. I was like, yeah, they're not going to do it faster. Yeah. It's it, the, no, be excited when if here's when you get excited. When you see a big UFO sighting that hits social media first before mainstream picks it up. You know what I mean? When all of a sudden it's it's tr- you know, a whole bunch of people tweet it or a whole bunch of people throw it up on YouTube. It's like, "Oh, I was there, man. It was so cool." Right. It turned over my my buddy's truck and did all, you know, all this stuff and stole my cows. Right. right 30 me. people in Oklahoma saw it and put it on YouTube right away and there you go. Like, what the fuck, right? Yeah, then then. Yeah, but right. if mainstream media puts it out first, it's like, "Uh, so I'm, Right, right. That's what I'm saying. What is what is their 
their agenda. What right. are they doing? Are they and if you want to, yeah, actually you, try the blue beam. I don't know. Yeah, at this point, blue blue beam is a pipe dream know. for me because it's like they're never going to do it. And 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 I will I will say the same thing right. I, I've said for years, which is, you do a blue beam thing now, I'm going to be I'm just going to look at my watch, going, where have you guys been? Why? <laughs> Why now? Everyone else will be like running, Sorry. screaming, throwing their hands in the air. I feel like, God, you'd have done this. It's all about time. It's showmanship, people. Showmanship. Yes. Timing is everything. Yeah. All right. Anyway, hey, uh, what do you got for a quote? Because yeah. we got to wrap this thing up. Oh, and uh, for, I keep forgetting the name, the gentleman with the Giants, another one, uh, some, in Potomac Creek, Stafford County, Virginia, 1937, they yeah. found bodies there and skulls. Cool. Um, yes, I have a quote. Yep. We all know that UFOs are real. All we need to ask is where do they come from and what do they want? <laughs> like, I don't know. I just feel, again, like they're just obviously they're up. They have an agenda. What are they doing? Why would they tell people that there is? A cylindrical type. I mean, it's right out of Battlefield Earth. It's it's like the, the ships they used in that, just a cylinder flying right. around. What the right. fuck? <laughs> yep. Crazy. Totally hear you. And you know people will believe it. Right. Right. Uh, cool. All right. We got to wrap this up then. Shout outs. Do you have any other shout outs? Uh, yeah, you, Karen B., Peanut Gallery, all the good callers tonight. It's good, good stuff. Right. See, I thought you were going to shout out my 13 year old self from 1981. How much of a how much of a <laughs> boy band guy I was back then? No, no, I I knew him. He was so white, he was transparent. <laughs> I was such a big. I've been a big white <laughs> dork my whole life. Okay, <laughs> with that, no, no kidding. I've been. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've 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 got I've got the photos to prove it, people. If you say, "Oh no, he's a shield," so no big dork whole life. By the way, last but last li- li- but not least, quick shout out to Jaron, who did. Um, wait, what? We're leaving? Is Peanut says we're leaving? No, we're not leaving. Uh, pit, last last shout out to um to Jaron because I listened to him in an interview. Uh oh, Reed, Reed. He goes. Pen- Pentagon officials suggest alien mothership in our solar system could send mini probes to Earth. Yeah, I actually saw that during the break. That's like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, it's it's a tease. It's a tease. It's brilliant. Um, knock knock. I gotcha. No, but Jaron mentioned me in an interview he just did a couple days ago. It's like you know people say Mark Sarson's a shill. I've heard this from Jaron so many times over the years. It's like look, I've hung out with him. He's just a big dork. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Thanks lie. for that, Jaron. Yeah, yeah, Jaron. That's his go-to that line. Actual. It's like, no, he's not a shill. He's a dork. <laughs> you can't be both. Hundred percent factual. Either that, or I'm the greatest secret agent ever. Okay, we're gonna tie a bow on this. We'll be back next week, same flat time, Nobody's same flat. That good. Oh, I'm not that good. Same flat time, same flat channel. Say good night, Karen. Good night, Karen. Say good night, Zulu. Good night, Zulu. Dana Calorie blows like five or eight smoke rings, and I will see everybody that's going to attend at the <laughs> Southern California meetup on Saturday. Karen, music. <sighs> awesome. Hot sex. Oh, yeah, hot sex. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Larry. Hope you're doing okay. Why is he dead? I don't know. Does, Just he, have sud- him. Does he have suddenly? No. Oh, okay. Oh shit. He's fine. Is that right, everybody? Maybe he's spending time on that website. <laughs> That's probably it. <laughs> the Karen tribute site from Vivid Video. <laughs> Shut up. What? Two thousand one, two thousand six.
as it's ever been Wound up chasing stars All over again There's words for what you got What you have And what you'll ever need Hello, Nick. 